everyone. I'm Philip James coming to you from Taipei and I'm going to share with you some of the symbols I look for when I'm exploring Taiwan and looking for Japanese influenced architecture or landmarks. So right now we're in the middle of Taipei and you can see this old Japanese house behind me. 1920. It's now like a dance studio performance center but it's right in the heart of the city. So let's explore the neighborhood, go walking and look for other Japanese architecture and other symbols or the things I look for uh, that indicate uh, is probably Japanese architecture or a landmark. Beautiful tree-lined sidewalks is another symbol of Japanese urban design. And you see it all over Taipei, but you also see it in a lot of other Taiwan cities such as Taichung and really everywhere else, but it's a symbol of Japanese urban planning. Just across the street here we have Linsen Park. Here we are at Linsen Park and you may uh, remember from a previous video that we were here and this is the site of an old Japanese Shinto shrine. It's now a wide open beautiful grassy area, trees, shading, but where the Shinto shrine was is now uh, all grassy in a beautiful park right in the heart of the city. Another symbol of Japanese urban design are old sports courts. So like old basketball courts, old tennis courts, or what you can tell if it's an old baseball diamond, put there by the Japanese. If you remember in Taichung, we have a tennis court right there in the park, put there by the Japanese. And then if you go to the old sugar factories, uh, you'll always notice sports are incorporated into the design where you'll see a basketball court in, such as the Jai uh, Japanese prison. They even had a basketball court designed into the prison garden area. So sports were a very important part of Japanese culture. And in many ways, they brought it with them and incorporated sports into their urban design with parks or even the factories. Uh, they had the baseball, the tennis, or basketball. So the Japanese came to Taipei, what did they do? They raised a number of buildings and then they built these beautifully designed broad boulevards that are tree lined. So this is Japanese urban design and you don't only see it in Taipei, you see it even in some of the smaller towns of Taiwan and it's Japanese influenced urban design. previous video about 10 things I love about Taiwan. You know I love sweet potatoes. So we're gonna have a dikwa. Uh, dikwa okay. We have some fresh roasted, fresh roasted sweet potatoes, fresh peanuts. Thank you. Fresh sweet potato. Thank you. Got a fresh sweet potato, the best healthy snack. And uh, 30 NT, so like $1 for this. And now, we're right alongside Linson Park. And these few alleyways along here, these little roads, remind me a lot of Osaka. Because there's so many like karaoke bars. And if you come here at nighttime, it feels a little bit like Japan. And if you're lucky, you might even see uh, a few business guys stumbling out of these karaoke bars and it really feels like Japan. The hot spring experience imported straight from Japan. Another reason to feels just like Japan and Taiwan when you come to the hot springs. Here we are at day two, hot spring. Take a look around here. There's even a museum that describes the history of this place and how Japan brought it here. This is the Beitou Hot Spring Museum 
and you look around, it's quite awesome. I mean, look at this soaking plunge right here. In so many ways, uh, this area reminds me of like Hakone in Japan. You walk through these uh, small streets and you have all the hot springs, but this facility right here, which is now a museum, you can just tell back in the day, it was just phenomenal. Really beautiful. And just a setup of all the plunges and the hot and the cold. I mean, makes me want to go back to 1945 and enjoy this place. Uh, it's a functioning um, like onsen. Where I'm standing used to be called Circle Park when the Japanese occupied Taiwan, and it was super popular for food vendors. But that behind me is a leftover war cistern, so the Japanese would store water there to help put out the fires when the U.S. would bomb Taipei, like in 1944 and 1945. Now this intersection is probably more recognized for being like the mini Shibuya crossing that we see in Tokyo, but the very baby version. And it's also the entrance to a super popular night market here in Taipei. In 1921, this was Taipei City Hall, and now it's, it has a dual function. It's Museum of Contemporary Art, and then the other part of the building is a junior high school. But you can see it has clear indicators of Japanese design, the beautiful masonry, the brick. You have the palm trees, which is always an indicator, almost always an indicator of Japanese design, and it's quite beautiful. But what's unfortunate is right around 1945, 1949, architecture dramatically changed in Taipei and Taiwan. So you can see that behind me. These are what became the newer buildings of Taipei and we lost the beautiful Japanese architecture. And it was replaced with what I'm gonna say and I apologize if I offend any of you, but it's just ugly architecture. I wish that this architecture style of the Japanese and the perfectionism that went behind it and the thoughtful design would have been preserved. But it's still nice that we have these buildings in Taipei to enjoy. In came the democracy of China that sometimes they try to replicate Japanese style bricks. And it's just not a very good job. It's not actually quite ugly. You can see they use these veneers, these brick veneer, to chip away and fall off, and it just doesn't have the same beautiful craftsmanship that we see with real Japanese masonry and brick. Too bad. So we're standing in what used to be the uh, employment center during the Japanese occupation. So this building was built in 1921. Yes. Uh, so now it's still uh, used as a government building for services. But you can see it's just quite beautiful. And the exterior has this beautiful masonry. The interior is quite beautiful. And I wish Taipei had and Taiwan had preserved more of these buildings, but unfortunately a lot were bombed, came down. But this building's quite beautiful. Yes, yes. And it's beautiful. And it's right in the heart of Taipei. I mean, you walk around this neighborhood and there's so many Japanese buildings. Yes, yes. Many, many, many. Beautiful Japanese buildings. Yes. Linsen Park. Linsen Park. A Shinto shrine before. Before. Yes. And here, so many Japan buildings. Uh, but the brick, the, the brick from Japan is beautiful. Yes, we know, we know. But China, Try to do brick, no good. <laughs> so thank you, John. John is a Jian. Jian? Jian, yeah. Jian, Chinese name, is a volunteer here. Yes. And uh, he's gonna more than welcome you when you come check out this location. Thanks a lot, Jian. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Home. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. See you later. Yes, next time. Um, so yeah, you can see this building is just so beautiful. And if you get up high enough and look down, you'll see another symbol of Japan, which is the rooftops. So this design of roof, you'll see it all over Taiwan. And of course, that's a clear indicator. 
that it's uh, Japanese architecture. Time for a refreshment break, a little tea. Let's see what we have here. Sometimes the Japanese architecture is hidden. So if you look at that building behind me, you'll see an old Japanese house tucked away inside the newer buildings. You know it's Japanese because you can tell by the roof and you can tell by the rooftop. But it's an old Japanese house. We'll zoom in so you can see it. This one was hidden. So this Japanese structure, if you take a close look, you see obviously it's a Japanese wood. It's even constructed with the old bamboo and like the clay, uh, but you would never notice. You know, it's right across from Taipei Main Station, and they've done what they can to cover it up. So they probably tried to cover it up in 1949. No better way to eradicate old Japan than to either tear down the buildings, or in cases like this, you try to cover them up. So every other little building, home, whatever apartment in this little quarter here is masked it's uh, eradicated and covered up with tile or concrete. But if you peel it back, you see this beautiful Japanese wood and this old Japanese architecture. You'll also notice that green color. There's that green color, and that's another uh, symbol or a sign that it's a Japanese construction. So this ends the little exploration of this little rectangle of Taipei, but you will find so much Japanese history throughout, throughout the city. It can be in this little pocket or it can be anywhere else in the city. You're going to find a lot of uh, relics and landmarks and, and architecture scattered throughout Taipei. There's just so much of it and sometimes you have to look behind other walls, but you'll see the symbols. You'll see the palm trees. You'll see the urban planning, the urban design of the wide boulevard lined by trees. You'll find the sidewalks, beautiful sidewalks that are tree lined. You'll see the beautiful masonry of the brick, the red brick. You'll see that green color that's often painted on the window panes. And you'll see these symbols in many Taiwan cities. And those are some of the symbols I look for when I'm curious if there might be some Japanese uh, relics or uh, architecture, maybe at the end of a row of uh, palm trees. And uh, that's kind of my key secret. You look for the palm trees, you're typically going to find some Japanese architecture. And you'll also find like old sports fields. So you find the old baseball diamonds, basketball courts, tennis courts. That's my secret for uncovering traces of Japanese architecture and landmarks in Taiwan. Hope you enjoyed this tour of Taipei. And if you did, please tap like. Curious to hear your comments. I always love to hear from you. And if you'd like to be notified of my upcoming videos, tap subscribe and you get a notification. Until next time, everyone, I'm Philip James.